Hi, my name is Cassie Riley Bosha. I'm here to talk about how to reinforce proper technique by completing the swing in a slow movement. Anytime we do anything in sports, it's rare that the first time we are taught it, we are expected to complete the movement at full speed right away. Anytime a football team practices a play for the first time, they're never running it full speed right away. Whenever we learned how to field a ground ball for the first time, we weren't getting ground balls fired off of a bat right away. We started slow, we worked on the basics, and we eventually progressed to a full speed movement that was going to be required of us in a game. One great drill to really work on that is to try to break the swing down into slower movements to reinforce great uh, learning at, for, from a hitter standpoint. And this is great from a coaching standpoint because a coach is going to be able to tell right away where there may be deficiencies in the swing. This is a great drill that I used a lot growing up when I was learning to swing myself, but I didn't stop using it once I got to college. This, this drill continued to be an excellent drill for me to warm up with and a great drill, especially when I, I would go into a slump and I wasn't feeling great about my swing, being able to go back to the basics and just restart my swing over and go through the movement slow and controlled helped me learn a lot about my swing and learn where any bumps and bruises may have been in my swing along the way. For this drill, we're gonna set up for a pitch that's being thrown right down the middle to start with. This drill can be used for an outside pitch or inside pitch as well. To begin, we're going to make sure we get into a great checked in position with both of our eyes on the pitcher. Once we get to here, we're going to try to complete the swing extremely slow, just working on proper sequencing with our upper body and our lower body. As my hands approach the ball, I should begin driving my lower half, my back knee towards the direction of my front knee. My knob is going to be in the downward direction close to my body and in between the inside part of the ball and my front hip. We never want our hands casting out too far. We never want them too tight. This means that my elbows are going to be bent as I come down towards the ball. My heel is going to begin to turn high. Again, I have a lot of pressure on my back big toe. We never want to complete the swing by spinning because we're not utilizing any of the power that we're trying to create into the ball. So as my hands approach, my backside begins to drive towards my front side. My hands are between my body and the ball. I have great bat lag. In order to enforce bat lag opposed to bat drag, we need to make sure that my hands remain between my body and the ball. As you can see here, my front elbow is still bent. I'm picturing in my head, driving my front elbow towards the direction of the ball. Because of that, my wrist will follow, my hands will follow, the knob of my bat will follow, and finally my bat will be able to whip around to the ball. Bat drag, on the other hand, is a really indicative of a straightening front elbow. If as I begin to go to contact, my front elbow straightens, my hands are now getting further away from my body. They become harder to control, and now I find myself in a really difficult position to try to whip my bat around to contact. A lot of times we'll be hitting the inside pitch off the front part of our bat instead of the barrel. And a lot of times with this, hitters will not be palm up, palm down for the outside pitch, but instead will be already starting a rollover process on that outside pitch. So keeping that front elbow bent and visualizing driving that front elbow to the ball will help a lot of hitters correct, correct uh, casting out with their hands. So to complete this drill, I'm going to go very slow to contact, focusing on my hand path to the ball. Once I get to the point right before contact, I'm going to pull backwards with just my upper half, leaving my lower half in that correct position. I'm going to pull back all the way to the point of where I would be at the end of my load. This position is, symbolizes the knob of the bat facing the catcher's mitt right here. It's a slight wrist load. Again, my elbow is still bent. A lot of times when hitters load, they'll try to straighten that elbow out too soon, and now we find ourselves in a poor position for contact. The hands, the negative movement in the load does not have to be huge in order to get a huge effect on the ball. It just needs to be enough to get our momentum going in the right direction. 
Here's how the drill will be completed all the way through. We check in. We go nice and slow to contact, keeping a strong, closed front side. My hips have not fully opened. I allow my bat to whip around. I now palm up, palm down with a strong power L. I leave my lower half the same. I pull my upper body back. I check into the ball again. And I'm just working on my hands. Again, this is not a power drill. This is strictly a form drill. We're not trying to hit the ball 100 miles an hour when we're doing this drill. Instead, what we are focusing on is having correct form. Having the correct form is going to lead to higher power numbers. It's going to lead to a greater bat velocity. It's going to lead to a greater bat quickness. Our swing kinematics matter. They are the driving force behind consistency, power, and quickness to the ball. If we are able to reinforce these proper mechanics every single time we warm up, they will be a great building block to working on later, uh, working on drills later in your lesson in your in your hitting plan. This has been Cassie Riley Bosha talking about the importance of learning your swing and having a nice, slow and controlled drill to be able to work on form throughout your swing.